Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a video that's all about Venus debilitated across the month of November. Venus is going to transit through Virgo and when Venus transits through Virgo she is in fact in her debilitated sign. So those of you who would like to just jump straight into your mini report, there will be timestamps below. You can click on those and just get straight into your personalized news. But for those of you who want to stick around for a bit of general overview, collective type news, you can stick around for some introductory comments. Uh, so now from the 2nd of November, by the way, before I begin, I just want to bring up a couple of quick comments from last time. I want to thank the viewer who mentioned the nodes. You mentioned that on Parashara's Light, you can actually calculate mean node or true node. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. I followed your instructions and you're absolutely right. The software does provide the ability to look that up. I remember in old versions, maybe it was in a different place. I think that's why I was thrown, but thank you for giving me an update on that. And one of you as well wrote such a lovely comment about the Australian news that I mentioned last time. And I just wanted to bring that up to thank you. And you, you wrote some other really lovely comments as well under that for the channel. So I want to thank you so much for everybody who comments. I do read all of them. I don't get around to everything, but I'm doing my best. And yeah. All right, let's take a look at Venus Debilitated. So from the 2nd of November, to the 29th of November, we have got Venus debilitated, Venus transiting through Virgo. And I've got some dates of note here just to, to take a look at. From the 2nd of November to about the 5th or 6th of November, Venus is actually quite strong because Venus is in a Parivartan exchange with Mercury. Okay, so that's breaking the debilitation. This is good, you know, we don't have any problems here really from 2nd November to 5th, 6th November. From a Venus point of view, things are quite good. On the 29th of November, we're going to have Venus and Ketu exactly conjunct at 29 degrees. 29 degrees of Virgo. So that is interesting. And that is, well, if you're using the true node, okay, which I am using the true node. So what I've got here for the 29th of November is that this could be an unlocking of something and I've got here from the deep and possibly dark past, okay, because I do think that some of the things that have been happening in our world lately, these are past issues, okay, this is, this is Ketu territory, Ketu and Mars were in those two big eclipses that we have just come out of, and this month has been a really, really tough month for the whole world. I do think this has been the toughest month, hands down. Okay, so October has been very, very intense. Looking at the fact that Venus is going to be debilitated, I think there could be a slowing down of energy across November. And I said this in the last monthly because we've got Saturn moving forward, I'm pretty sure, yep, Saturn goes forward on 4th November. I forgot to mention that in the last monthly, but I'm mentioning it now. So Saturn is going forward 4th November, but I did what I did talk about a lot in that episode was Saturn's 10th aspect into Scorpio, and we're going to have Mars and Sun move through there. So I think that could be difficult, but slow is what I'm seeing there. And then I think with Venus being debilitated collectively, I do have something to say about what that's gonna be like for November. And I've got written here, Virgo is digestion and Venus is love, worth, health. So the node I have here and the insight I have for this particular transit is that collectively, it's like we're collectively having trouble digesting big experiences. And that is a concept that I've been working with for a few days now, uh, maybe a couple of weeks. And I actually got this book, which I haven't even started reading, but it arrived today. I didn't know I was gonna make this video today either, by the way. 
I looked up the transit wheel and I was like, oh gosh, Venus is like debilitated very soon. I better make this video quickly. I thought I'd get to make it next week, but um, no, I have to make it now. And this book arrived today and this is Ayurveda and the Mind. And this is by Dr. David Frawley. And I'm really excited to read this. I've got like four books on the go at the moment. It's terrible. I'm reading one of you has published a book. I'm reading one of your books at the moment. So I'm reading a lot at the moment. Um, I've just got added this to the list as well. But the reason I got this book was because I think maybe a week or two ago, I had Google searched this concept of Venus being in Virgo and the ability to digest past experiences and especially experiences to do with love. So if you're wanting to like clear out your love life and get a fresh start a person who's got venus in virgo which by the way i put my hand up i do i have got this placement that's why i was contemplating it quite a bit um yeah i mean it does it this placement does have something to do with how the mind digests experiences and there is a collective mind Okay, so if you study the work of Carl Jung, he talks about the collective unconscious. I'm pretty sure I've got that right. I know there's unconscious and subconscious and there's all types of consciences and consciousnesses and all that. I know. But um, yeah, there is a collective one. And so the collective mind, how is that going to digest what we've just been through and that's why i got this book because when i googled about mind digesting experiences or things that happen in the world or whatever anyway one of the articles quoted from this book so i thought oh fantastic i have to read this book so i'm going to learn more about this and how this works but i think this whole thing is really fascinating and i think November could be a difficult month because in the last monthly I mentioned the concept of shell shock and I'm also now going to throw in here this concept of having difficulty in digesting what what has happened like and and what is going on at the moment so there are small examples of this and when I go through this in the monthly uh, little news bits for some of you, I will be talking about things like with work, for example. Maybe you bit off more than you can chew. Okay, so what that concept of biting off more than you can chew, that is, I believe, in the realm here of a debilitated Venus. And maybe collectively, we've all tried to process a lot more than we're able to at this time. It's just something to contemplate, just something to think about. You can also contemplate this in your life. You know, do you have too much on your plate right now? Or, or are you hungry for more? Are you ready for new things? Maybe the two eclipses have done quite a good job for you of clearing the path and you're now ready for new things. I know some of you are definitely in that position. That's great. So... Another thing, yeah, if you've got uh, Venus debilitated, for example, in the birth chart or anything like that, you know, I've got the note here, love relationships might not go great, um, but you can be very fulfilled by your work. Okay, so Venus in Virgo loves work. Virgo is work uh, and Venus is love. It's a very simple interpretation there. All right, I think we're good to begin. We're going to have a look at Aries take a look at the time yeah we're all good oh good all right well Aries Aries welcome thank you so much for joining this is Aries ascendant Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so across the month of November Venus is debilitated in your sixth house so when it comes to love relationships if you are in a partnership you know boyfriend girlfriend married any of that uh, this is not the best month for relationships. I've got here, you might find yourself arguing a bit more with partner or you could be a bit more sensitive at this time. 
So this is definitely a time to not put any pressure on any significant relationships in your life. It might be wise as well to value thinking above feeling at this time. Uh, if, if feeling is too much, maybe reach for that mercurial power and, and use your mind instead. Okay, if you've ever watched the work of Anna Runkle, the crappy childhood fairy, she often talks about the fact that if you've got something like CPTSD, you actually don't want to feel too much. You know, they say you got to feel it to heal it. Well, if you've got difficulties, trauma or any of that in the background, sometimes you need to think more than feel. Okay. Uh, now for you Aries, when it comes to love and relationships and all that kind of thing, Venus is, Venus is in much better shape from 24th December onwards. This is a good month for work. You can find a renewed love for what you do. Uh, also clients might be extra appreciative of your work or notice the extra lengths that you go to. So you really could be rewarded for a job well done. Aries, I do like this for you from the perspective of work. You can really excel at work, you can love what you do and you can receive a lot of appreciation for that. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your fifth house. Now though Venus is debilitated, it's actually quite good here in the fifth. So Venus is lauded by Mercury here in the fifth and that can make your speech or your texts or your emails even sweeter, possibly romantic or even a bit stylish. So you might really communicate in a way that's creative and fun at this time you know, sort of mercurial romance here, something like that. I've got here, if you have children, you could play games with them that challenge them to think. That could be a really fun activity. Uh, games that, yeah, really, really get them thinking. That, that would be a good thing. Now, work-wise, you might receive appreciation from clients or from your staff if you manage people. And I've got here, as long as you don't aim for perfection at work and aim instead to be helpful or just to make a difference, then this month can be very rewarding. So you definitely don't want to be aiming for perfection. If you do, this month could be very frustrating. But just aim to get the job done, do a pretty good job. You know, you're aiming for sort of 80-20 type thing, not 100-0. Don't aim for perfection this month. Keep the momentum going. That's going to be important. All right, Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your fourth house. So this is a really nice energy, actually. Don't worry that it's debilitated. It's in your fourth house. This is beautiful. So this is a good energy to be at home and to cozy up with books. I've got my book here that arrived today, which I haven't read, and I'm so excited to read it. So that arrived. Uh, so cozy up with books or things that your mind really enjoys engaging with and it could be a tv show that you just really love the characters and you know they're fascinating to you or whatever it is okay like um something creative but something that stimulates the mind is a good thing i've got here perhaps you are thoughtfully and mindfully reorganizing your home perhaps you're studying up on Feng Shui principles or Vastu principles or something like that and you're getting tips and ideas and but it's mercurial you're maybe reading an article and then doing something you know uh, to do with the home there and I've got if you're especially thoughtful and mindful this month then being at home will be a true joy and that could be being thoughtful and mindful with the people at home you know family just um, yeah being being extra mindful on their behalf. This could be a really beautiful month. 
Now work-wise, you could be finishing a big project. For this, I was looking at Venus and how it lords Ketu. Uh, at this time, assuming you use, of course, the true node. I also looked at some other lordships and things like that to be saying that. So it's possible that you're, you're finishing a big work project. Uh, but one thing you are definitely doing is you're clearing the path and getting ready for fresh things on the work front. It's a good time to think about what work you really love to do and aim to do more of that. So Gemini, I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your third house. And don't worry that it's debilitated. This is actually a really good house for Venus to be in. And this is great energy to spend time with your friends. Okay, and this could even be via Zoom or via technology. If you're living far away from your friends or if the weather is terrible where you are. Um, but I've got here, if possible, be with them in person. If you can, you know, turn it into a little adventure. Try and all of you get out together. That could be good. Now that we've done the eclipses, you know, it's like you can go and see your friends now. Honestly, this last October, I was just like, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and now November, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go places. Uh, got here a great time for great minds to get together and talk a lot. Now, work-wise, it's actually a great month for you to present something or to be seen in some way. Your speech can be especially creative and thoughtful at this time. People will love how you present something maybe there'll be you you present things in just the right way and that could be due to the help of this transit so cancer i want to thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is leo ascendant leo moon or leo sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so across the month of november venus is debilitated in your second house and don't worry that Venus is debilitated because as per house, it's a really beautiful place for Venus to be. I've got the note here, this is great energy to buy something beautiful, but in brackets I have here, if Saturn is okay with it, no debt, you know, so yeah, check that out. Um, or maybe you're just putting things on your wish list or you're doing a bit of window shopping, something like that. You could also be cooking up something delicious and healthy, this could be a good time to cozy up at home, especially if you're in a part of the world where the weather is conducive to that. But you're doing something in a mindful and a mercurial way and you're really enjoying it. You're enjoying the fine details of something as well, possibly. I've got here, perhaps you're exploring new recipes, you know, and it is that mercurial thing of the mind being clever and I don't know, maybe you're Google searching something and you're finding something exciting. Now work-wise, you might find a renewed love for what you do for a living as well. Or you might find a creative way to enjoy your work more. And I've got here, you might also be able to digest something in connection with your work. Yeah, you're one of the ones, Leo, where I talk about, I've got the note here, you won't be biting off more than you can chew. You will give yourself the right amount of work to do. Have a look at that. Check in with where you are work-wise. Do you have too many projects on your plate? Uh, I, I'll tell you something, I've got way too many. I've got like 10 massive projects that I want to do. Is it 10? I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not 10. It's a few. I've got a handful. Realistically, I've got a handful of too many projects, not enough time. And as a result, I'm kind of time slicing a little bit between lots of different things and nothing's making any progress. So I might have bitten off more than I can chew. But this is, this is something to look at. What's on your plate when it comes to work? Do you have too much? Do you not have enough? Are you hungry for more? You know, maybe you just need to look at that and plan around that or uh, organize yourself better or something along those lines something about organizing yourself and your energy 
And now we've had the two big eclipses, you might find actually that you can focus and you're going to be able to burn through a lot of stuff. So see how you go, Leo. See, see how all of this goes. But it's, it's good energy here. That's what I'm seeing. Supportive energy for you. All right, we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your first house. Now with your Ascendant Lord three places away in Scorpio, you might have the courage to deal with some kind of hidden love issue. Okay, so if you're in a relationship and you're able to do something about it and you're able to talk to your partner about it, I've got the note here, take care in how you speak with your partner about it and know that sometimes it's important to think more than to feel, okay, which, which is an interesting thing to say because normally in healing circles we talk about the importance of feeling it. You've got to feel it to heal it. That's such a classic. But sometimes you've actually got to think logically. That's actually the better thing to do and especially if you have like CPTSD or any of that, if you've ever watched Anna Runkle, The Crappy Childhood Fairy, you know, she talks a lot about this, that sometimes for some things and for some people that actually need to think more than to feel more. Uh, and if you've got a debilitated Venus, you might be, and I have debilitated Venus, so that's why I'm, I'm exploring this in some depth. You might, it might be preferable for you to think more than to feel. Isn't that interesting? There are, there are many instances where you actually want your thinking mind to be in charge more than your heart. Isn't that incredible? It's not always that you follow your heart all the time. Now work-wise, let's take a look at this. So work-wise, you might discover not only a renewed passion for what you do, but also that you have more inner authority than ever before on some issue or some domain at your work. Okay, so it's a time where you're recognizing, hey, do you know what? I have actually developed myself in this area and you know you can sort of acknowledge to yourself hey I'm actually quite good at this. I've got here debilitated Virgo can achieve great fulfillment work-wise this could be your time so during this transit you might really feel a tremendous fulfillment with work and that gosh I love doing this work or I love this particular aspect of what I do something along those lines, there might be something quite fulfilling there when it comes to your work. Virgo, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your 12th house. Now even though Venus is debilitated, this is actually one of the best places here in the 12th house. Venus adores being here, right? This is, this is a very Venusian spot. So Venus loves being here. I've got here, take time out if possible. That's what Venus would like to do. Uh, or find some time to indulge in some activity that you really love. Now writing could be an excellent therapy at this time. See if you can discover insights in automatic streams of writing. And you can do this, you can actually ask your guides, hey, is, is there any message? Is there something I need to do? And maybe just sit quietly and just write, just creatively write, come up with a story. I don't know, just do some creative writing and see if some answers come. You'll be amazed at how when we write creatively, sometimes there are insights, answers, downloads, interesting things come into that writing so see if that helps now work-wise you might not be feeling so motivated apologies Libra the memory card got full so yeah you might not be feeling so motivated work-wise isn't that interesting that's because Venus is in the 12 she doesn't want to do work there she just wants to shop and have fun and, well when it's in Virgo especially she wants to shop if Venus is maybe like uh, exalted in the 12th or maybe she's enormously spiritual, 
there you know it's it's a different kind of a venus venus lauded by mercury though could be quite commercial as opposed to being spiritual isn't that interesting when i've done i've done in-depth videos about debilitated venus and some of you have written who've got your you've got an exalted venus oh you're profoundly spiritual people yeah i've seen that it's beautiful uh, so yeah, but work-wise, you might not be feeling so motivated, but hey, that's okay. Use the time to strategize and dream how you would like your work to change so that you can do what you love to do more and more. Okay, so it's a great time for dreaming, a great time for planning, a great time for maybe watching others that you like or admire and just looking at, okay, what do I love about their work and what they do and yeah could I could I get there and, and be doing that kind of work too it, this is a nice transit for you Libra it's just imaginative and relaxing and, and quite beautiful so if you've got time to just have an afternoon where you aren't doing too much uh, dream and indulge <laughs> that's the guidance here all right, thank you so much for joining Libra. We are now gonna welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your 11th house. Now don't worry that it's debilitated. Any planet in the 11th is superb, okay? So this is great. This is social, this is fun. It's a great time to network. Great time to make new friends, spend time with people you know already. Uh, this could be a time where singles meet someone new. This is really lovely. Also, Venus is just kind of coming out of the 10th house. You're going to have many months of good Venus energy now. Now, work-wise, your speech could be really beautiful, could be persuasive. It's a great time to present work with passion and enthusiasm. Now, health-wise, if you are a bit tired or low on energy, this could be related to Venus as Venus does lord your 12th house. I was having a look at the lordships and I thought, mm, yeah, there could be some tiredness here. So remember the yin principle, the feminine principle of putting yourself first. And maybe you need to pause, maybe you need to stop, maybe you need to rest just for a little bit. And sometimes when you give yourself permission to rest, you'll be amazed at how the resistance or tension passes quickly and then you're actually re-energized to do more work so it's always worth just giving yourself time out because you become fresher and you get back to your work quicker and, and you're better able to do your work too scorpio this is beautiful energy enjoy this transit this is a really good one all right we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your 10th house. So this is not the best time for a relationship if you are in one, if you're married, you've got boyfriend or girlfriend, any of that. Not the best time. And I've got here, take space from your partner this month if you need to. You might be in that honeymoon phase of your relationship where there's no problem at all and that's great but if you're in a situation where you know maybe there are some old things or things come up um could be just a time to yeah as i say take space from partner this month this is actually a better month for work than relationship after this month you're going to have many many months ahead where relationship energy is a lot better okay so don't worry things are going to shift now work-wise this is a great month to get ahead definitely don't be a perfectionist an 80 20 mindset can help you okay so don't aim for like a hundred percent perfection a hundred zero you know you're aiming for 80 20 you you just want it to be good enough and get it out there and get on with it and if you have that get it out there, get on with it mentality, you can achieve a lot and feel really great about it this month. 
this is a transit of feeling really fulfilled work-wise so do enjoy this part of the transit Sagittarius I want to thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Capricorn ascendant Capricorn moon or Capricorn sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now across the month of November Venus is debilitated in your ninth house so if you're traveling do take care this could be a good month for work related travel it's not a bad month for travel okay so don't not travel do travel I think October I was telling everybody don't travel <laughs> you know um, and I did follow that advice myself I didn't particularly go anywhere too much but uh, if you are traveling here with Venus debilitated in your ninth it, it's a kind of thing where you might just want to uh, Venus debilitated it's kind of fine little details it's like you know you can think sort of Mercury retrograde energy here possibly like it's just little details you want to take care of but what this is a great month for is it's a great month for traveling through the mind so you can study lots of things you can read things you can enjoy books and you know that kind of travel is, is brilliant as I say fine detail a love of detail a love of learning a love of communication a love of the communication you know the writing of other people that kind of thing now work-wise this is a month just to focus on the aspect or aspects of work that you love doing identify what are those things and how can you make your life more full of just those things and as I was putting your notes together Capricorn I was reminded of a time when a long time ago in my early 20s, this was ages ago, I used to run a very small little graphic design business but um, it was part of a business incubator scheme in Australia for these young entrepreneurs and I, you know I was breaking even all the time for about two years, I wasn't making much money but I was, my clients were actually quite decent, um, Hewlett Packard was one of them and Macquarie University was one of them, I had, to, I had some nice clients and but I was always breaking even I never made any money I hardly made money it's like two three years and um, anyway the reason I'm telling you all this is because the part of the job that I loved doing was just copywriting I just loved writing but I would take the photos and I would typeset and I would organize files for print and I would you know there were so many things I used to do I even did it like a colored calibration course. I learned all these things anyway. But the, the thing I loved doing was just writing. And I was in my Sadi Sati at that time. Saturn was working me hard. I used to do all these things, make no money, all that. And then when it was Saturn reward time, I got a job at Leo Burnett where I was a copywriter. And day after day, I would just get briefs to write. And I didn't have to do any graphics or winning clients or... You know, I didn't have to do anything. Every day a brief would land on my desk and I got this fun task to do. And I was just amazed. I was like, wow, you could just do all day what you love doing and be paid for it, you know. And I was only in that job for a year. That was part of my Saturn reward time, I think. But yeah, like you've got your reward time coming, Capricorn. And what job, what aspect of the job do you love? Maybe you can just do that job, that aspect as a full-time job like just the fun bit no other bits that you don't want to do okay that's why I brought up that whole big long story I hope it helps but yeah I mean this is a time where you can visualize it I mean I didn't even know there was such a thing as a copywriter you know where all you do is write and do that all day but then I, I, I've discovered that and I was like oh this is cool and ended up doing that for a long time so anyway, Capricorn, I hope this has been helpful, but this is, this is a good month for enjoying your work. All right, and don't worry, you're going to have um, better transits when it comes to love. Next, the month after, so think through to December, 20, 24th December, after that, I think your transits for love are going to be much, much better. But I'll double check that and I'll write something on the screen if I have to. 
All right, Capricorn, well, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your eighth house. Just checking the time. We're okay. <laughs> uh, yes, Venus is debilitated in your eighth house. Oh, gosh, I've got in brackets here a little astro joke you could have an affair. That is terrible advice. Don't do that. Do not have an affair. But you kind of could, you see, because Venus is debilitated in your eighth house, right? So that's that's like, this is not an ethical Venus and uh, it's in the eighth. You could have a secret affair. I know, how crazy. That was my little astrology joke. Please don't do that. I know we're all on the spiritual path and none of us are gonna do that. It's fine. So let's be serious now. No more astro jokes. Uh, what do I have here? Do you know, Venus debilitated in the 8th house is actually a really good position because one of the things you can do with this energy, it's, it's here by transit, and one of the things that you could do is you could analyze a love situation in your past that hasn't worked out, and you can get some ahas, you can truly figure it out, and you can let it go once and for all. Imagine, wouldn't that be great, right? I've got here, you could journal about it, study it, digest it. You could let it go forever. So what is that experience in your love life or that past thing in your love life that you just want to fully digest it, be done with it, release it, okay? We've got here Venus in Virgo. This is love. We've got here eighth house. So this is hidden stuff. This is maybe something you swept under the rug to deal with later, you know, and there, there, a lot of that, that will happen in a relationship, especially if you are dating someone who's got Scorpio or this kind of energy. They do like to sweep things under the rug for later, you know, they don't want to deal with it now, they want to deal with it tomorrow <laughs> or never, <laughs> you know, or just put it in the past. But no, this, this is Venus in Virgo, and Venus in Virgo wants to get to the bottom of things. Venus in Virgo wants to figure it out and wants to clear it and draw a line in the sand, okay, and be done with something, right? It's really important. So this is a time, Aquarius, where you can really just clear out your your love life. That is, that is a strong possibility. Or, or fully digest an old experience with love, and that way you're ready for new things to come into your life. Now work-wise, this is a month where communication could be really strong. Virgo's Lord Mercury is in the 10th house, so you could be a really strong communicator at work. You might be able to feel more fulfillment in aspects of what you do. So what you do at work, what aspects of that are you really good at? And maybe in the future you could just do that for a living rather than the extra tasks that perhaps you have to do as well. Maybe you'll be able to be in a position where you only do, you just get paid to do the stuff that you really love. This transit could get you thinking about that and strategizing how to get there. Aquarius, I want to thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome... Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So across the month of November, Venus is debilitated in your seventh house. So if you are in a relationship with a committed partner, with a boyfriend, girlfriend, anything like that, this is not the best month relationship wise. Okay. So definitely take care in how you speak with your partner. Things could feel just a bit tense or it's just Venus doesn't transit so well in, in the 6th house, in the 7th house or in the 10th. Now in all three of these places, Venus loves to work. So work can become a bit of a solace, but relationship could be difficult. So this is a good month to do your own thing more. It's a better month for work. But here's an interesting thing. Through analysis, you might be able to digest an old relationship issue. Okay, because we've got Venus, the planet of love, and we've got Virgo. Virgo is digestion in the body. 
So if there's something in your love life that maybe you're stuck there or there's something you haven't fully digested kind of thing, this could be the month where you, you, you kind of fully digest it, you're done with it and you're ready for the new, you're ready to take on new things. So if there's some old blockage, journal about it. See if you can get your head around some love thing that didn't work in the past. And maybe it, it could just be that you write it out and you feel good and you feel like, well, I've done something. You know, acknowledge that. Acknowledge that you, you did something. You put it on paper. You got it out. And very often you can tear up those bits of paper, put them in the recycling, and then just feel free. And it might crop back up, back up. You know, Byron Katie talks about, you know when you're done with the lesson, when you could face it again. You see, so then you're not in aversion, right? When you're ready, if you're like, if it comes around again, you're like, okay, well, I know how to clear that. I know how to get over that, right? That's where you want to be. Okay, you don't want to be in that place where it comes back again and you're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I know. I've been there a lot. It's like, I don't want that thing. And that's aversion. And that energy will, will keep it coming around. You want to be neutral. You want to just be, so neither going towards or running away or, no, you're just neutral. You just want to be neutral. You can get there through this transit across the month of November. If you work with this transit, you might be able to write your thoughts about love and really figure out a whole ton of things. It can be amazing. Now, work-wise, this is actually a beautiful transit. You'll be a strong communicator. Venus lords your third house. You can definitely find fulfillment in what you are doing, but don't aim for perfection. Aim for 80-20, so don't aim for 100-0 where the thing is perfect before you release it to the world or whatever. No, just get the work done and put it out there. It might have a mistake, but just publish it anyway. I sometimes do that, which is terrible, I know. Tiny little mistakes do happen. They do, it's, it's a mercurial thing, tiny little things. Um, Someone once told me, though, that you, you shouldn't aim for perfection. That's God's business. God, God does perfection. We, we're human, so don't, don't even bother. And that helped me a lot because it's like, yeah, get stuff out there. But yeah, I've got here, don't aim for perfection. Aim for 80-20 and you can actually get lots done. This transit may well help you with that. This transit may also just help you love what you do. To, to find that, feel that, feel the fulfillment of, gosh, I love this aspect of my work or what it is that I do you know I'm pretty lucky here with this work that I'm doing there's so many aspects I enjoy like I do enjoy making these videos I like making a little masters video I like what else do I like I love doing readings I think that is my favorite that is my favorite thing I love to that that is the thing yeah but I love making videos as well I love editing you know the only thing I don't like so much and I'm not very good at is anything to do with like accounting or these kinds of things. I'm just like, oh, but even that I will devote time to. That's kind of reminding me I have to sit with some admin stuff and, and do that. Pisces, I hope you're doing all right. Those of you who are Pisces moon, I hope you are doing okay with your Sadi Sati. Keep going, hang in there, look for the good transits. And I do think this is a good transit. This is a good transit where you can, you know, and you've got Saturn 12 from your moon, so you're being a little bit isolated anyway. So this is a good transit to be introverted and introspective and to analyze. And do you know, one of the things I've got here with this, um, the title of this video, I've got here Venus debilitated, thinking above feeling. You know, and this is something that you can contemplate. You can contemplate, well, when do I need to feel more? But equally, when is it valid for me to think more? Sometimes we need the thinking mind more than we need the heart, actually. And that's really, really important. And here's a transit. Here's Venus, you know, debilitated in Virgo. 
that's saying, hey, it's all right to think more. You know, and in fact, you might need to. So just explore that within yourself and see where do you need to be more heart-led. Equally, where do you need to be more mercurial and more led by the mind? And this is the transit that will help you figure that out, which is really incredible. So because debilitated Venus can be very um, analytical about relationships and feelings and all that kind of thing can make a good counsellor this placement. All right, guys. Well, I hope this has been a good episode for you. Let me know in the comments below how you got on and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.